Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in this series. This video lays the foundation of the concepts we are going to see in the upcoming videos. In this video, we will see what a typical neural network setup looks like and go through all the components that are required for solving any problem with neural networks. Before going into details, let's recap on what we have seen so far. We have started our course with the introduction to neural networks and we had an in-detailed session about a single neuron and the operations that happen inside a neuron. This is the schematic of a single neuron. These are the inputs coming to this neuron. Each neuron has some weights associated with it and the number of weights depends on the number of inputs. So here I have m inputs, so that's why I have m weights here. And every neuron has one bias. The operation that happens here is actually the weighted sum. Once we got the weighted sum, we pass through an activation function to get the final output. Now this output is passed to the next layer. We have done all these computations and implemented them in Python. Then we have seen the neural network, which is a combination of these individual neurons. We have built these neural networks in Python from scratch. Then we have gone through different activation functions we use here and we implemented all of them in Python. Now where should we go from here? We understand how neural networks work and operations happen inside them. But how do we use these networks for solving real world problems? How should we approach the problem? Any real world problem can be solved by one of these approaches. So these are all different ways of solving the problems in machine learning. You take any problem, it will fit into one of these. We will restrict our discussion to supervised learning here. Most of the problems we can solve using either classification or regression tasks. In classification, the output is basically a decision. So we need to decide on a category and the actual network output will be a probability score. These are some of the examples of classification problems. Image classification is a broad category of problems. So you can have different types of problems in this image classification itself. So for example, cats versus dogs are identifying any animal per se. This is one of the simplest problem. Detecting the diseases in the chest x-ray images. That is another type of image classification problem. So we have lots of problems which comes under image classification task. And then coming to the text data, we have spam versus non-spam for the email classification. Also, you can use the tabular data which one example is loan sanction or eligibility. This is a tabular data of all the details of the applicant. We need to decide whether the loan can be sanctioned or not. And this is kind of uh, internet data, Twitter data. You can analyze the sentiment of a particular tweet, whether it is a positive sentiment or it indicates a negative sentiment. And even you can use the sensory data from the industries to detect any anomalies in the working of machines. So these all comes under the classification problems. For all these cases, the output will be a probability score, which indicates that particular event. Let's say for this case of loan eligibility, the output will be the probability score of getting a loan. And similarly for regression problem, the output will be a quantity or a value. So the actual output from the neural network, we expect a real number. So these are some examples of this. So these are all mostly like forecasting or predicting or a trend analysis. So these kind of problems comes under regression. So for all these cases, the output will be some value. For weather forecasting, maybe the example is like, what will be the temperature tomorrow? So the output will be a number, 30 degrees. And similarly, the market forecasting, what can be the share value of a particular stock tomorrow? So it is also a real number. And population estimate, what will be the population of India by 2030? So that's a number. Now, if I want to solve any of these problems using neural network, how should I approach it? So for that, let us consider by solving an example. Let us consider a classification problem of loan sanction or loan eligibility. So depending on some factors, I need to decide whether the candidate is eligible for a loan or not. Let's suppose our data looks like this. I'm considering three features here, the candidate's age, his salary and the outstanding debts. And my output will be an SR no decision, whether he is eligible or not. From the network point of view, it will be a probability of his eligibility. So if you observe, my data has two components. One is input features and the second one is target. Now I need to build a neural network for solving this. Let's do it. I have three input features as we have seen, age, salary and depths. So I need three neurons in the input layer. This is my input layer here. What about the output? What is the output we are expecting? We are expecting a decision whether they are eligible for a loan or not, right? So the output layer, I need just a probability score. So I am keeping only one neuron in the output layer and it gives the probability score of eligibility. Now what about hidden layers? How many hidden layers should we keep? I'm keeping two hidden layers for simplicity and I'm taking five neurons for each hidden layer. So the decisions for these hidden layers are all heuristic. So I am expecting that this network should be good enough for solving my problem here. But after 
training and validating if you observe that accuracy is not enough then you can add more number of layers you can only alter the number of hidden layers we cannot change the input layers or output layers these two are fixed depending on the problem so we can only modify the hidden layers for improving the performance now what are missing here the connections right all the connections between these neurons which are nothing but weights so let's add the connections so each connection has a weight associated with it also there should be one bias for every neuron but i am not showing here for the simplicity so i am assuming that my weights and biases are initialized randomly what are the operations that happen inside each neuron here so these are input neurons so there won't be any computation happening here but in case of hidden and output layers there are some computations happening at each neuron so the computations are nothing but the weighted sum so if you consider this neuron these three are my inputs here so i will calculate the weighted sum of these three inputs and i will keep it here so let's do this for the first layer so i calculated the weighted sum of the inputs coming to corresponding neuron and keeping it here now before passing this output to the next layer i need to pass this through an activation function we have seen many activation functions and for simpler cases like this i think relu works better so let's use relu activation in the hidden layers and the same way in the second hidden layer i calculated the weighted sum and i applied the relu activation so far so good what about the output layer we need to calculate the weighted sum of these five inputs as usual but what should be the activation function we can't use relu activation here because relu is unbounded on the positive side but the output we are expecting is a probability score that means the value should be between 0 and 1 so we need to use sigmoid activation function here so i calculated the weighted sum and i am using the sigmoid activation function so now my design is completed so i have designed an architecture for solving our problem we got the data and we got the model for it now what's next next we need to train the model what do you mean by training learning these parameters so the parameters are nothing but weights and biases except weights and biases all the others are fixed in the network so the only parameters you can tune are weights and biases let us consider the first example of our data set so the candidate age is 25 and his salary is 24 lpa and he has 10 lakhs of outstanding debt we pass these three inputs here in the input layer and after propagating through the whole network i am assuming i am getting the output as 0.7 so what does this mean this means that this particular candidate has 70% chance that he will get a loan right but whether this decision is correct or not how should i know for that we compare this with our target or label you can say now what is the target for this sample that is no which means he is not eligible for a loan so this is the target this is the actual decision but our network predicted that with 70% confidence he will get a loan for computation purposes we can represent yes as 1 and no as 0 now there should be a way to compare these two values and calculate the error that's where the loss functions are used there are different loss functions for both classification and regression problems let's suppose for classification we are using one of the loss function here and we are calculating the loss between these two values or error between these two values now i got the loss i need to reduce this loss right how do we reduce the loss by adjusting the parameters of the model because this loss is a function of these parameters so the output is a function of these parameters and so the loss itself is a function of these parameters and the parameters are weights and biases so we need to adjust the weights and biases of the model so that the loss or error reduces but how do we adjust these parameters should we increase these values or should we decrease these values by how much amount we should increase or decrease how do we decide on these values this is done by a learning algorithm such as gradient descent these algorithms uses a sophisticated way for adjusting the parameters depending on the loss value so if you observe this is an optimization problem here we need to minimize the loss function which is our objective right so this is a minimization problem here these are actually solving for minimizing the loss right so that's why we call these as optimization algorithms or you can call this as an optimizer in short we will see all the available optimizers in detail in the coming videos and each uses their own mechanism for adjusting the weights and biases so now we adjusted the weights and biases of the network for the loss we got here for our first sample similarly we use all the samples of our training data set and we pass all of them through the network and adjust the parameters accordingly to reduce the corresponding loss values this is what happens during the training so this training is an iterative process in which we keep adjusting the weights and biases of the model until we reach the desired performance and that completes our training process and during the actual testing 
we freeze these parameters okay these are all trained or learned parameters so as to reduce the loss values now these parameters should be freezed and the model should be used only for predictions we won't disturb the model anymore there won't be any loss function or any optimizer used in the testing phase we just use the output of the model for making a decision so if you see the total setup has all these components for solving any problem we need to have these components we need a data set which will have the features as well as target for supervised learning we need to design a model for solving this as part of the model we need to decide on the number of hidden layers number of neurons in each layer the activation functions etc and then we need to come up with the loss function depending on the task then we need to use an optimizer for adjusting the parameters this total process we call it as a training process you can approach even the regression problems in the same way we used an example of classification problem but the regression problems can also be solved in the similar way you just need to adjust the parameters like the number of neurons number of layers loss functions all these parameters you need to adjust accordingly we will go through details of all these loss functions and optimizers in the coming videos so far in our course we have seen the forward pass that means we have seen the hidden layers what are the computations happening inside these hidden layers we have seen the activation functions and we have seen till getting an output in the coming videos we will see different loss functions and different optimizers in detail that's all from this video if you like the content please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos thanks for watching